My father, in the Second World War, was a gunner. He served in Trabuk and Palestine, amongst other places, and he wrote a book about his experiences, and here's a copy, Gunner Green's War. And one thing he related in this book was how, in Palestine, he started a library. Now, there was an army library, but one box of army library books contained six copies of Pilgrim's Progress, which wasn't what soldiers really wanted to read. So he got subscriptions together. He toddled off to Haifa and built up his supply of books so that soldiers could borrow them. And if some soldiers had their own books, he confiscated those as well, and they could read them as long as they paid the subscription. So what is the point of this? The point of this, that that library effort was one little sign of what people wanted for after the war. Now, if everyone chipped in a small amount, everybody benefited. And one thing that the Royal British Legion is focusing on this year is the rebuilding that took place after the Second World War. Now, after the war, governments were elected and in this country, one of the most significant reforms that came about through the new government was the establishment of the National Health Service in 1948. But it wasn't just that. It was rebuilding housing, new towns like Stevenage, resettling refugees, recovering from the trauma of war. The rebuilding was massive. Now, this obviously connects us to the present and the thoughts of build back better after COVID. But before we explore that, I would like to think, what is the connection between Build Back Better and a poem that was written in 1915, and it's a very famous one, in Flanders Field? It was written by John McRae, who was a Canadian officer, after a friend was killed, and after noticing poppies growing in ravaged war fields. In Flanders' field, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that marked our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid their guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders' field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow on Flanders' field. So, McRae, speaking kind of um, from, on behalf of the dead, says, take up our quarrel with the foe. Now, for McRae, in the early years of the war, the foe was obvious before mass slaughter led to disillusionment. In World War II, Nazism was a clear evil. But is there a foe now for us? Now, it would be right to say that COVID is a foe that we are fighting. Every death from COVID is a tragedy especially when it's experienced without the support and help of loved ones. And the after effects are a huge challenge too. There'll be long-term illness, job loss, mental health issues. It's a huge thing from which we will need to rebuild. But I wonder, is there a bigger foe? In September 2019, Antonio Guterres, the United Nations General Secretary, said, Seas are rising, oceans are acidifying, glaciers are melting and corals are bleaching. Droughts are spreading and wildfires are burning. Deserts are spreading and access to water is dwindling. Heat waves are scorching and natural disasters are multiplying. And fossil fuel investment encourages the spread of disease. 
Is the earth crisis the present foe? Is the injustice, the suffering of many people around the world from something that they did not cause? And if it is, how do we take up the torch? How do we take up the torch? As Christians, we must turn to our Bibles. Now, I was going to use the parable in Matthew as a stepping stone to talking about Amos and righteousness and justice. And I was going to talk about how many times different subjects get a mention in the Bible, like hell, 13 times, wrath, 86 times, grace, 122 times, faith, 424 times, love, 538 times, righteousness and justice, 800 times. I'm not going to do that, though. I was going to talk about the idea of letting justice flow like waters and if waters means waves and they keep coming, if it means rivers, they keep flowing and we have to seek justice continuously. But I'm not going to do that because something in the parable stopped me. I didn't get stopped by the wedding celebration at the heart of the story and the idea that even in difficult times, perhaps especially in difficult times. God calls us to celebrate. And one of the things I do recall about my father's relating his stories to us was always they were full of life and humour as he talked about the war. We need, as well, ways of finding a celebration of God's love for us right now. Now, I wasn't stopped either by the fact that at the centre of the parable, there was a group of women, a marginalised group, reminding us that Jesus was always including the marginalised, children or lepers, diseased. That's what Jesus did. I was stopped by the lamps. Kenneth Bailey, who's a Middle Eastern scholar who spent a lot of time actually in the Middle East and amongst communities which have lives which have probably changed very little since biblical times, no, has seen village women, like these women in the story, walking around with lamps at night. And what he noticed was that they didn't hold the lamps by their feet so they could see the way. They held the lamp by their faces so that people could see who they were. And that's what stopped me. We are invited to the celebration as we are. Marginalised, right in the thick of things, ignorant, foolish. We come as we are. And when the women arrived, the bridegroom wanted to see their faces. And God wants to see ours. And I wonder, is that what justice is? Knowing that we are all the same, that God welcomes us as we are and wants us to do the same to others. And in case you think I've forgotten my question, what is the foe we're facing and the one I haven't? Is the foe the idea that some people are more important than others? That some people don't matter? If leaders in World War I could have seen the faces of soldiers being slaughtered, could they have countenanced it? If Nazi leaders could see the faces of Jews who were being slaughtered in concentration camps and other marginalised groups and seen their humanity, their value, would the Holocaust have happened? And for us, if we can see the faces of our children, our grandchildren, who will suffer from the results of climate and earth crisis, if, for instance, we could see the faces of our friends in Ethiopia, where Tirfan tell us they're suffering from drought and floods and loss of livelihood, and loss of homes due to the earth crisis, 
Would we allow that to happen? And does this story of the lamps tell us what justice is? Knowing that God sees our faces and accepts us. And he wants us to do the same to others. So is that the foe? The foe is not being able to see the faces of others? I want to end with hope. The UN Secretary General in the same speech said, I am hopeful. How can we be hopeful? And I want to offer two words. What if? At a recent Green Christian Festival, Rob Hopkins, the founder of Transition Towns, spoke to us. And he was talking about imagination. Using those words, what if, to create things, to make things happen. He told us a story of Liège in Belgium, where they said, what if? And their what if is, what if we grew all our food within the city of Liège? And now, that's what they're doing. And what if Norwich decided to grow its own food? What if... And the heart sees, we decided that we were going to be able to grow food for everybody on the estate. And what can we see? I can see faces. I can see the faces of young and old together growing things. From the marginalised and the included. Growing things together, having fun together. I can see their faces. What if... Everywhere, all over the world, this kind of thing was happening. What if defeating our present foe, the injustice of the earth crisis, became an exciting, wonderful, inclusive, amazing adventure? Now that's what I would call taking up the torch. And it wouldn't just be building back better. It would be creating a whole new world. Amen.